Qantas launched the first direct service from London to the western Australian city, a distance of just over 9,000 miles. The flight was supposed to take 17 hours, but Captain Andrew Simpson managed to shave more than half an hour off the anticipated flight time. Whilst the journey itself took just over 16 hours, this particular piece of history has been a long time in the making. Aviators had dreamed of this moment since the 1930s when the Kangaroo route was first operated. Back then the journey took just under two weeks and involved stopping an extraordinary 31 times. Miraman Aidan McGurran was on the historic flight from Heathrow to Perth. Image, Aidan McGurran. The flight took just under 17 hours to reach Perth in Western Australia. Image, publicity picture. The historic flight took off from Heathrow on Sunday afternoon. Image, Qantas. Technology has come a long way since then and flight QF10 took off from London Heathrow's Terminal 3 at 1.30 p.m. on Sunday and arrived in Perth at around 12.40 p.m. on Monday 5.40 a.m. UK time. Boeing 787 Dreamliner replaces the need for a traditional stopover and is likely to be a precursor to direct flights from London to Australia's eastern cities. The Dreamliner is regarded as the ideal choice for such a long flight because of its lower cabin noise, larger windows, better air quality and advanced technology to reduce the effects of turbulence. The 7,000-mile route used to take weeks in the early days of commercial aviation, image, Qantas. Not surprisingly, Qantas were thrilled to become the first airline to operate the direct London, Australia route. And they were hardly likely to let an occasion like this go by unheralded. Even check-in had a razzmatazz about it not normally associated with international flights. A guy in a giant kangaroo suit was on hand to welcome passengers, along with members of staff dressed as surfers and the obligatory didgeridoo player. Qantas chief executive Alan Joyce said, A direct flight makes travelling to Australia a much more attractive proposition to millions of people. The plane took off from Heathrow amid plenty of fanfare. Image, Getty Images Europe, Qantas opens bookings for their new direct flights from London to Australia. We expect many travellers from Europe will start their time in Australia with a visit to Perth before going on to other parts of the country. The flight reduces travel time by not only eliminating stopovers but by taking advantage of the most favourable winds on any given day without having to factor in a midpoint in the Middle East or Asia when selecting a flight path. Mr. Joyce added, This is a truly historic flight that opens up a new era of travel. For the first time Australia and Europe have a direct air link. It certainly couldn't be much further from its predecessors. Back in 1935 the journey took 12 days in a tiny de Havilland 86. Passengers touched down on four different continents, enjoying stops in Singapore, Baghdad and Crete amongst others. Qantas anticipates millions of people will soon be using the route. Image, Getty Images Europe By 1947 the journey time had been reduced to four days with the hops of the kangaroo route getting larger. A Lockheed Constellation Qantas took travelers on a 55-hour, six-stop journey across the world. By the 1970s Qantas was flying 747s usually stopping at Singapore and Bahrain between Australia and the UK. The new direct route has only been made possible due to the fuel efficiency of the 787 Dreamliner, which boasts a range of almost 10,000 miles. The history-making flight carried 236 passengers, 42 traveling in business class flatbed seats, 28 in premium economy and 166 in economy. Qantas is planning on even longer direct flights within the next few years. Known as Project Sunrise, Qantas has challenged Boeing and Airbus to deliver aircraft capable of flying regular, direct services between London and Sydney, Brisbane and Paris and Melbourne and New York at full capacity by 2022. Miraman Aidan McGurran's verdict The prospect of 17 hours on a plane is probably not everyone's idea of fun, but then again neither is an unnecessary stopover on a marathon long-haul trip. I have to admit I am something of a fan of flying, despite nearly choking to death on my first ever air trip as a toddler. Fortunately, my dad saved my life on that occasion. The magic of aviation still provokes a childlike wonderment in me which I realize isn't shared by too many travelers. But even with my bias towards air travel I have to say I was pleasantly surprised by the experience of flying direct with Qantas from London to Perth. Aidan is greeted by a surfer as he lands in Perth. Image, Aidan McGurran, there definitely, and quite rightly, was a sense this was a big event, which indeed it was. And I have to admit my own in-flight experience was given a distinct advantage due to the fact I was occupying a seat at the front of the bus. 
But even given that this is must be one of the most enjoyable long-haul flight experiences imaginable. It was my first time flying Qantas and up until now I always regarded Virgin Atlantic as the friendliest and most helpful long-haul crew. But now I am not so sure, the Qantas team were incredibly pleasant and patient, in stark contrast to some airlines. They were helpful but not fawning, with a likeable down-to-earth Aussie approach. The easy charm of the crew belies the fact this must be really hard work for them. I caught a glimpse of them preparing the breakfast trolleys, and it was like a military operation. To make life harder for them on this marathon voyage because it is a new service, everything is slightly unfamiliar. But you wouldn't know it from their completely professional, unflappable approach. The menu itself was created by one of Australia's best-known chefs, Neil Perry, and it shows. My starter for dinner was a spring chard soup with